Sean Windsor's A Nice Guy. Maybe too nice. And everyone knows it. Every day. In fact, the only time he gets to rest in peace is at the office. The soul of Detroit. Enter M.L. Elric. Hi, I'm your new partner. A man of vision with a mouth to prove it. You asked it around, you're trying to get around my face. It's gone. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on. That is not paid for by them. That is paid for by the people of Detroit. You are qualified, young man. I'm not qualified for this job. Let me tell you something. You want to go right now? Okay. You want to go right now? Hey, kids, it's your old pal, ML Elric, working hard to keep Sean down. <laughs> I do it so you don't have to. I'm, I'm proud to do it. I'm pleased to do it. It's honorable work. And this week I'm joined by Mark Fellhauer and a very special guest who's not just a guest. She's now part of the crew. Erica Woo-hoo! Erickson. Yes. Yes. You just keep roping me back in, don't you? What's right. wrong you're with like, you? You're like Michael Corleone in Godfather 3. It's a sick trauma bond we have here. <laughs> it, it is sort of a shared uh, shared experience, like uh, coming back from uh, war or maybe... Uh, <laughs> Being in the band uh, Jane's Addiction, where everybody's throwing punches at each other, and then they screw up my chance to see Love and Rockets once again. <laughs> oh, it's always about you. <laughs> I know. It's about Daniel You're in a fight, and they cancel the whole thing, but you're mad. I, Were you really going to go? Uh, I'm going to be out of town, but somebody said, well, would, you, he... <laughs> would you go? And I said, I would only go to see Love and Rockets, who I love, and I don't care for Jane's Addiction. Sorry. Oh. I don't like him, no. Why? Not a fan. Uh, I think yeah, that's okay. Perry Farrell is an asshole. And that's right. You don't like bands that he well, can't separate. I, I the do art like from he the can't artist. separate no, the art never. from the artist. Yes, no, he cannot. I, I do I, like the Smiths, so there is there are some exceptions. I am proud of him though, because yeah. Jane's Addiction is at least a little bit later in time, right? Like the intro, that music sounded from the seventies or eight, even eighties, early eighties, yeah. And Mike usually Schiff. it's from the forties, so Mike is moving <laughs> forward a little bit, <laughs> right? That was from Night Shift. Can we get you? Eventually, we'll get you into this century. That was you the never, show will be long over by then. But you never saw Night sure Shift, Sean, that. with uh, Michael Keaton. You never went to Blaze Land with Bill Blaze Jowski. Did you ever see that, Erica? I did see Night Shift. Where long where time Fonzie ago. is uh, works in a morgue, and then Michael Batman comes in and turns it into a brothel. Ooh, yeah. It's pretty, pretty. I've wild. never seen it either, though. He's like the nicest that, guy that ever, by like, the way, right? Henry, Henry the f- Winkler. He is. Oh, my gosh. Do you see his tweets? Just follow him on Twitter if you don't. He's we, just so sweet. Yeah, he's like Mr. Rogers. We have interviewed yes. him before. Without the sweater. Is, it is almost off putting how kind he is and how nice he is. Oh, we like need that. to interview him again. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that. Oh, I'd love huh? to have him. Doesn't out. work he's, with your vibe. He's great. He no. does children's books and he's really into helping kids. I don't who mean you as a human being, struggle. I mean your show. I'm offended by that. No, it worked great. It's just it's just weird. You don't expect the fun. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Our boss is trying to talk. Oh, sorry. sorry. I, I, <laughs> is it Adult Swim? I thought we'd let the children play. Sean Windsor, L'Enfant Terrible. That's French for terrible infant, but you probably figured that out. It's the only baby I know who looks like uh, like John Quincy Adams. <laughs> <laughs> and they share the same politics. How many languages do you speak, by the way? He's a Whig. And how many chins were you counting earlier for him? Uh, you were making fun of him. Pretty, you were pretty mean to Sean before the show, so okay. we should be a little nice oh, to well, him that's today. Okay. I'm just we? getting warmed up! What, what do you mean, <laughs> we? You're already on his side? We're three minutes in this no, isn't fair defending you. you came in you can't do better than all e's Sean. i see what it is <laughs> i see what it is this is the e side of the table it's all vowels over here yeah how many chins tell the listener <laughs> you were the one who was talking you said about 10. it I, I found that sean that back uh, back in the day was uh was an impressive uh physical specimen uh a giant of a man um back in the day he still is look at yeah, that guy he's, uh, i relate <laughs> no, yeah right now that he's all warm oh i wear the hoodie to <laughs> hide the bro yeah you know what i mean oh my <laughs> the man's ear yeah i knew where you're going so yeah, you yeah. Know anyways we're yeah, done so yeah, so we've, ahead, got, we've got a new cast member here <laughs> isn't that i mean why are you doing this erica i mean we're grateful but 
It has something to do with a community service sentence, but okay. we're not supposed to talk about it. <laughs> so we don't know how long she'll be here. She's got to do 100 hours, and we're going to chip away at that until yes, it's going to take a while her debt to society. So, uh, so we'd no, like I to love thank hanging out with you guys, believe it or not. We'll see how long really? this lasts. Believe it or not. Yeah, we'll see how long this, this lasts. Mark. This oh. is my first and last show. <laughs> oh, jeez. I, I say that every week, but they, they keep dragging me back. Well, we've been doing this show for five years. Oh, my God. And uh, we've, I think this is episode like 275, 50. maybe. It was like what? 50? It does. <laughs> and that's, that's just this show. But uh, every time we have Erica on, people love her perspective. People love her energy. It's the energy. And Let's unlike us, and, and Mark, I should say, Eric and Mark are both broadcast professionals. They actually know what they're doing. So I, I don't know about that. You worked uh, in, as a yeah, broadcaster. Yeah, you worked in as a broadcaster. Only, yeah, did yeah, you not know not, what you were doing? I'm no, the only I didn't. amateur I think, here. I thought that was abundantly clear. I, I never had any broadcast classes. I never had any Neither training. did I. Yeah. I just kind of threw out there and... Your greatness it, just it worked at one station, top, not it? so good at the other. But uh, okay, um, but uh, yeah, no, but but Erica, people love Erica on there, and for us, it's a lot of fun to have her here because she just kind of she's very effervescent. Oh, am I? You are. Oh, <laughs> and, and I don't want to use only adjectives that begin with an e, but also edgy. Edgy. Really. An erudite. <laughs> All right, keep going. Keep going. I'm just going to start. And euphemistic. Oh. oh and enthusiastic. I'm trying to avoid. Oh, I did, good. I was going to. And exhausting. That. Yeah. And oh, exhausting. oh, that was you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> she brings a certain. Go ahead. Kind of euphoric. I mean, Sean and I were talking about quality, something, but right? you wanted to take over. What so. we were we talking about? I don't even remember now. We were, we were talking about. you talking about. Uh, how handsome you are today. You talk how much about do they pay sell, you to sit and compliment gotta, me? This, this, yeah, Erica likes coming back here because these yeah, guys I mean, like, just, hey, is there we go. Yeah. Every time I say Erica might be here, like, are you going to be here? I'm like, well, I'll be here too. So, oh, really? That's what it is. So when I come here, you're not here. And that's the, that's the draw. Do you smell something, no. by the way? Do, is, is somebody upstairs heating something in the microwave? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. No, I, I get what some kind smell? of Stouffer's something. I, I don't know what the hell. Non sequiturs with Sean Windsor brought to you. It's just real. It would just. Or, hey, this is real time. This we're reacting probably, to the life around us uh, uh, by the second. That's what we do. This is a great time to mention Luke Nowacki because if if you're easily distracted by smells or sounds or random thoughts and you can't pay attention to your retirement plan, well, maybe you want somebody who can watch your money for you while they're, I don't know, speculating about things that happened 43 years ago on a basketball court. Anyways, listen, I heard from the best of celebrities that if Donald Trump wins in New Hampshire in, New, in November... So I was watching Veep last night and they went to New Hampshire. If Donald Trump wins in November, it's the end of our nation. Then I heard from some other people, if Kamala Harris wins in November, it's the end of our nation. Since it appears that you may be screwed either way, why not ask Luke Nowacki for help managing your investment portfolio as the country implodes like the last days of Rome? What do you have to lose? Of course, you can't lose more than 100%. So you should give Luke a call and let him help you make a plan so you can just think about smells and visions and whatever the hell else it is that goes through Sean's mind. Because when you call Luke, he will make it all about you, sweetie. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Bonaic Well. Sync member F-I-N-R-A-S-I-P-C. Bonaic Well. Sync is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent. Bonaic Well. Sync. And here's another read that is tailored to Sean. Father Time takes don't a worry, toll he's not, on he's, all of us. Don't worry, he, he's not even paying attention. He's been on his phone the whole time. <laughs> no, Look not. at it. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Oh, no, you set it down. I just took some I pictures. This is, this like is, one of my, I took like some one, pictures. This is how prescient Dr. Y is. I was listening this is how the whole clearly time. he sees ahead. <laughs> These are all reference to Sean, but he didn't even know it. Father Time takes a toll on all of us. We need discipline to fight off old age by trying to live right. But you'll need no discipline to see right if you let Dr. Yaldo change out your poorly performing lenses with technologically perfect clear view implantable lenses. No more readers, glasses, bifocals, or contacts, along with 2020 vision, both near and far, for life if you give Dr. Y a call. In a matter of 10 or so painless minutes, the clear view replaces your natural lenses and allows you to see the small stuff and read the tiny type like you did decades ago. Are those your readers sitting right there? 
These are because I don't have the clear oh! view implantable lenses, but I am going to see Dr. Y next month. I got to, Are you really? Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm changing my my eye care provider. I'm going to have him take a look at my peepers and see what's going on. Talks the talk, he walks the walk. That's yeah, it. There you go. Uh if I come back with an eye patch then uh forget we talked about this. But It'd be a good look for you. Yeah, why don't you just own it? It works for that guy in Congress. Mm -hmm. That Dan, what's his name? Yeah, uh, Dan Cock. From Texas? C, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's kind I mean, of an interesting cat. He, yeah, he lost it in combat. It's a yeah, I mean, that's a little different. Uh, Crenshaw? Is it Crenshaw? Is it Dan Crenshaw? Crenshaw. That, well, yeah. What is this? Mm -hmm. This is not safe. I could get a pen in the eye. I could turn the wrong way, get a microphone right in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, it's, on the it's certainly the same as combat. Yes, what no, we're doing. I'm not on my phone. You know what? There are heroes everywhere in our lives. I mean, I was on my Sometimes phone. Sometimes we just fail to recognize that. Yes. <laughs> For anybody that just missed it, <laughs> Sean, you were just busting on camera on your phone, and you go, "No, I'm not on my phone." Well, I put it down at that point. No, no, no. Uh, He's one like of, a one child of my child in no, class. no, no. One of my very best friends sent me a text and said, "Are you casting pods?" And I, I instead of responding, I took pictures of all three of you and uh, just texted them. That couldn't wait to her, and she said, she said. And I quote, no, th this is good. She said, uh, what did she say? Oh, I, I can't even use my phone. It's frozen. She said, what she said who is that gorgeous woman? And I said, that's Erica Erickson. You know, she's part of our show now, Fox 2, F Fox 2 reporter. And she said, I want to know about the hair. So oh, it's very on point today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. She said, unbelievable hair. And I so, like that you have. Taller so it was hair than, about the show. You have taller hair than Elric does today, too. I love big hair. Cool. I like making big hair. Yeah. Fun. Good. Yeah. Sean, you were talking about you know smelling something weird, which nobody else down here can smell. <laughs> so I don't know if you're having a heart attack or what. Because oh um, isn't burnt toast like one of the first things they no, said? But it didn't smell. It didn't, it didn't smell like burnt toast. So, it smelled like uh, okay, burnt stofers. Wait, wait, it was just like an aneurysm. No, it smelled that, like two dollar ramen in a styrofoam cup. I don't know. It didn't smell. It, it didn't smell. Like definitely have some toast. kind of condition. But have you ever been at home and your wife goes, "Do you smell something?" and you just say no because you don't want to deal with it. Or is that just me? <laughs> what, like if your wife is farting or something? No, no. Like, do you smell does something burning? Does something smell does your, does no. Your, does your wife fart and say that I've got a little something for you? No, not at all. Oh, there's no, a little something for you. She's classy. No. Oh, then, then there's people who burp and then they blow it in your face. Yeah. Well, yeah. those are brothers. They're called brothers. Yeah, that's... Or that's I have girlfriends who yeah, do that. Exactly. Really? Come on. Don't be sexist. Huh? No, but is burnt toast that that's a thing? Yeah, it means you're having a stroke or a heart. Is, is a it stroke a stroke or a heart attack? Well, yeah, you're, I, I think, think you're it's right. a stroke. Yeah. yeah, and I think if you taste almonds, you're being poisoned. Yeah, I've been having a stroke really? the whole show. <laughs> I think so. Are we? <laughs> this is fascinating. Sure. Are we just making up things. Um, you know what? Uh, uh, yeah. I always sound like I'm having I was, a stroke. So I was telling you about Doctor <laughs> Yaldo a minute ago, and. He continued to get twenty percent off on his clear. Oh, you weren't done. Sorry. Lens. When is he ever? The lenses uh, through September, as well as custom LASIK for. Th this is what pays for the hoodies, Sean. You may want to pay attention to this. You can get custom LASIK for fourteen ninety nine an eye, no matter what your prescription might be, through the end of September. Go to yaldoeyecenter.com. That's what I did. Sign up and let Doctor Yaldo see like an eagle, or if you're on this show, like a turkey. Or if you're like Sean, like a turkey vulture. Okay. By it's the way, they say in India that uh, that the uh, vultures are dying and it's hurting people because they're dying because vultures rid uh, carrion and other disease. What a syncytis. totally useless fact. <laughs> I'm just trying to well, I'm trying why? to draw the parallel between vultures and Sean, and it turns out vultures are actually valuable. So why are the why are the vultures dying? Sean, are they killing Eric, each don't, other? Don't don't feed into it. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure it's because they don't have a good retirement plan or 2020 vision or 2015, which you can get with LASIK. But I, I, I'm just, that's just I told you. I warned you. That's just speculation. You'll, you'll you learn. You did warn me. You'll learn. You did warn. Yes. It's just speculation. Which is I am learning. I'm not even going to drag, drag the kid. So wait a second. In, just, in, in, in 10 minutes in, I am a, a turkey necked. <laughs> Stroke uh, victim. Yeah, stroke victim. <laughs> stroke and with heart the attack soul, victim. With the soul of a vulture. Yes. No, I didn't say soul. I well, just that, said that was the implication. Vulture. That's a big word for you, I know. But that was it was implied, right? Yeah. It's a form of human We We didn't even get into the remarkable uh, the remarkable resemblance between you and a four-eyed Buddha. But, uh, oh, right. wow. I, I got to tell that. you. I, okay, I got to step in here. You've been, very, you've been very, very nice to Erica, and you've been extra mean to Sean today. Extra mean. Are you trying to get brownie points with Erica? What's happening? I think if you uh, check yeah, nobody Snopes, likes everything I've said is true. Nobody likes a bully. Stop picking on him. That's okay. Let me do it. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's let me let me tap Although, out. I will say this. Okay, uh, here's, just, a, here's a segue. Don't don't pay attention. To that. I shouldn't have pointed out. This man came in today, and I told him you had a very very good column today. I thought it was uh, thank you. Thought it was really good, and it wasn't the typical. It wasn't a typical sports column. And then the next thing I said to you is. I wonder how much shit you're going to get for your column today because it was basically a little. I've gotten some. Have you? A little. Um, explain your column. Go ahead. You want me to explain? You it? explain it, please. There was a, a shooting. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It was an AI column. That's why he's, he's Sean Bot produced it. Are you, okay. je- are you jealous? Oh, maybe. I haven't, I haven't maybe had, that's for all this. I haven't had a column Sean in a couple Angst of weeks. That's coming. why I got nothing yeah. to talk about him. Elric wishes he had a stroke. Well, we usually build the column, the story, the the story. What? Yes. The, the podcast around his columns and Kwame Kilpatrick, right? So when we're not, he's a little. But I like all of them. I like, those are good topics too. No, they are. Um, for but, 19, you know. But Detroit was back in the I the know. national news this weekend because after the Lions' stupid loss um, on stupid. Sunday, it was fucking awful. But have you awful. turned on him, by the way, Mike? What's that? Have you turned on the Lions already? By the way, no way. Uh, no, I have not. I've not watched any of them. But uh, oh, sorry. We started the hockey season last week when the Lions were on, so we had the first game of the Bulldogs' twenty third season. And then uh, I was driving home from East Lansing, where my Spartans were victorious, oh, tied for how, first in the Big Ten. Look how happy uh, he is. He just got to my, use the word on I. On my way home on. Uh, <laughs> Well, you asked me. I'm supposed. What am I supposed to ignore you? I'm one minute I'm bullying you, the next minute I'm responding. To you. I can't win here. No, but, haven't you learned that as well? You know what? This is why Erica has the insights that we've been looking for. She is a psychological profiler, from what that's I right. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, you were you were saying, Mark? Oh yeah, I forgot we were talking about something. Oh yeah, so, so you were explaining his column. Yeah, two men were killed uh, at a shooting at a tailgate in Eastern Market after the Lions game, and you write a column about how, you know, yeah, this is tragic, but it's not shocking, and that's how kind of that kind of sucks. But what I thought you would get a lot of shit for in your column is you write about how, why do you need to take a gun everywhere you go? And I would imagine people would just fire back and go, I take a gun every time I go to Detroit for protection. And I just wondered what kind of feedback you were getting on that story. Yeah, we have a word for those people. It's called pussies. I mean, if you have to take a gun well, everywhere you're going, I mean, come on, man. This isn't Mogadishu. Look, I, I, I don't. I don't. Apologies to Mogadishu. I don't understand it, but I do know people that go to Detroit and will always, you know, they're licensed and they will always take the gun. Now, you know, you're not supposed to take it to a sporting event or where you're drinking or anything like that. There are laws against that. I don't. I don't get it. I don't understand why you would take it to a tailgate, but um, this guy did, and he shot and now killed two people. Yeah, when the gun is there, you're a lot more likely to use it. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, you're drinking That's and the problem. Your judgment's right. off. Your judgment is off. Eight hundred thousand concealed weapons permits. Well, I in, do in think, Michigan. but I don't. I do is that a lot? Are, is that too? I mean, I don't know. I, it's not. I mean, it, what is it? Eleven, twelve percent of the population of the folks old enough to um, to get one. It's just. It seems to me that's a lot of guns out and about. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are a lot more guns that are at homes. Yeah. Than, Fine, and you and you mentioned that, and um, there were a couple, a couple other options. Like you would think, yeah, of course you would need a gun. I, I'm not a gun guy. I don't really understand it, but I know a lot of people that have them and are responsible with them, and actually do want more laws um, to help protect, you know, innocent people. I guess is the way to say it. But I just, I would expect anytime you dive into a gun discussion, especially, I would think the free press, you would get attacked. I would try, I, it was, I tried to be fairly measured though, right? And I didn't, I said, hey, you want to hunt? Fine. You want a pistol in your house for protection? Fine. But why do we need them out in public? Right. That's, that's my thing. Well, it depends what you're doing. You know, if you have a job where you're maybe a process server or you're a courier or you're doing something where you're going into dangerous areas, yeah, it my, makes my, sense uh, to My father-in-law be- worked. Uh, for at t and would work downtown midnight shift, always had his weapon on him. Sure. Yeah. It, it, it's okay to be strapped if there's a reason for it. But but my problem with people bringing their guns to Detroit and justifying it by I'm going to Detroit is, first of all, what do you know about Detroit? 
not that much because it's not that dangerous. Most of the people who get shot in Detroit are shot by somebody they have a beef with. They are involved in yep. some crimes. They ripped them off. Or shot by someone who has a beef with someone else and they were... There's a lot of bad shots out there. Yeah. yeah. A lot of firebombing, too. It's like, oh, I thought they were in the White House. Turns yep. out they're in the Brick House. The Sorry school, to everybody in the White House. The no, school shootings don't happen in Detroit. Let's just put it that way. No, but but the, so the problem is... This this demonization of Detroit is is out of line. It's out of date. But the other thing is, you're going to a social gathering. Now, if you want to keep your peace in your trunk like you're supposed to when you travel, mm-hmm. fair enough. But if, if I'm going to, first of all, if I'm going to a party, and I think I might need a gun at that party, I'm going to the wrong party. I'm not going, going to go to, the wrong to that party. party. If you're going out somewhere and you're drinking, your gun does not go with you. Period. Period. Yes. Right. Bottom right. line. Yeah. Right. Do you think cops go to to the bar and they're gonna go out and drink and they're gonna bring their gun with them? Actually, I do, but that's just cops. But I mean, that's. <laughs> that's but I mean, if they're if they're gonna go out and get bombed, if a cop gets in trouble drinking with their gun, they, they could lose their job. Exactly. I mean, is, yeah. They, and they, that has happened. Yeah. yeah. No, this is this. They understand what the rules are. So first of all, don't go to a place where you think you're gonna need a weapon. Because you're going to the wrong place. I mean, we and, don't, and, we, and if you're all, planning like, on drinking, doing drugs, then you know you're not going to be using that gun responsibly if yes. you if you need to use it. Uh, my, my I mean, do we know? Absolutely. Do we know how that this, that this guy was drinking though? <laughs> I mean, uh, so, I don't know. No, I don't know if we know if he was drinking or not. And I don't. And h- h- here's the thing. Maybe let's just say there's no concealed ability or legal way to con- carry a concealed weapon. It, Maybe he takes it anyway, right? That's I understand that, but why make it easy? It's almost like the state encourages it, and Michigan's obviously not the only state that does this. I think most states do at this point. But to what end? The numbers, the social science doesn't back any of this up. You're not safer carrying a gun. The numbers do but, not back that up. And I remember I, when, I, when this started happening twenty years you're ago. Right, but legislatures the, were saying, "Well, we want to stop." You know, we want more people packing out there in case there's a mass shooting, whatever. It never stops anybody. Sean, you're right, but what you're missing is people feel safer when they have it. Uh, no, I totally understand. And I wrote, and I, I mentioned that in the column, right? I think. Well, most gun owners are responsible. They know what they're doing. Of course. Mm-hmm. They take care of their peace. And I wrote that, too, in the column. And, and the problem is a lot of these guys are a lot, and it tends to be overwhelmingly guys. They're a lot like me when I got my leather biker jacket. I started walking around thinking, oh, shit, I got a leather biker jacket, man. I'm, nobody wants Did to mess with me. Did you have pants with that, too? Pardon me? You have leather pants with that, too? This you is got, why the show Are you saying you so got long. bravado from a jacket? Oh no, yes, just, because I, I used to go to a lot of what? A, a lot of punk and clubs, they, and you, you got your the, biker jacket on. You feel like you're kind of a tough guy, but then you realize up until the minute you handed the money over, you're the same guy. You just have a leather jacket on. I think a lot of these guys... They get their piece, they go someplace, and they start thinking, well, now nobody wants to mess with me because I've got this gun. I'm like, if you're not ready to go toe-to-toe to to somebody without a gun, you sure as hell shouldn't be ready to go toe-to-toe with a gun because you're you're swimming in deep water and you should get the fuck to the shore and not be shooting at people. I agree. And also, do these people... (laughs) Do, can these people even regulate their emotions? Do these, do these people even know how to use the gun? Or did they just get the gun? Did they even learn how to use it in the first place? Uh, well, Probably if they, have not. A, if they have a permit, they did because the state did requires they? it. Well, the state requires it to take you. Uh, that hard, doesn't mean you paid attention in the class. I guess that's did I, they, I guess that's true. Trust but, me and Sean, I'm gonna say it. I know I know there are many ways to fudge that. No, that's that's true. Yeah. But I, can we just get back? Did you were you wearing leather pants and was <laughs> Were there holes in the butt cheeks? What happened to this jacket? You really have a you realize you looked ridiculous. What kind of hat on? Did, and was the collar studded around your neck? Oh yes. Did you have studs? <laughs> did you get laid? He's <laughs> <laughs> like Vito in The Sopranos, right? No, no, <laughs> and no. It's like, oh, Mike's no, got this. Yes and no, yeah. and not He's necessarily this, uh, in that order. To all your He's questions, got this great life out there that nobody knows about. I, more power to you. I think it's awesome. So, okay, I apologize for mentioning my own experience to try and make a point. (laughs) But the issue is having a gun just makes you a person with a gun. It doesn't make you tougher. It doesn't make you badder. And in some cases, it makes you more reckless because you think you're going to be able to get yourself out of a situation. To me, the the little videos that I've seen, and I wouldn't pretend to know the whole situation, but somebody starts stepping towards you and you're feeling threatened, 
how about you go someplace else as opposed to drawing? Because are you talking about this, the particular videos that are out regarding? Well, just what I've seen, market? I see people yeah. yelling at each other, and I, I see somebody pull their gun. It at that escalated point, escalated so quick because there was a weapon there, and I thought kind of the no, point no, no, but, no. It wasn't because there was a weapon there. It's because there's a chicken shit with a weapon there, and the guys who own guns and the women who know own, own guns and who respect the weapons know that if you pull that thing, you better be it ready is. to shoot. Yep. And if you're not ready to shoot, do not pull it, and do not pull it because you're a pencil neck who got in some bullshit that your big mouth got you in. That's when you shut up, you apologize, and you get the hell out of there. You do not and also, start throwing shots, particularly in a crowded place. Right, in a crowded place, you don't know where that's going to go. The You could clearly be, and I, I, did, I only saw part of the video, uh, but you're in a crowded place. Uh, once you pull that, I mean, I, I saw the guy, he looked tiny. I yes. don't know if he had yes. very good control over that thing. Uh, one, you, you can pull it too without meaning to even fire. You could, when you pull a gun out, you're Everyone's going to run anyway. I, I don't know the situation yeah, again. That's what people count on unless the other guy's that's got a gun. That's what people count on unless the other guy's got a gun. I don't West. know. There you go. Yeah, but I, I thought a really good point was made by uh, Chief White, James White, and uh, you put it in your column too. I did. Like, if you're gonna fight, have a fucking fight. Have a fight. Live, yes. Live, live to fight another day. But, but uh, go uh, ahead. But, but, maybe you have the chief of police saying, "Why does everything have, have a to fight? be? Let's pull a gun out." Yeah, I quoted him that. I also quoted so him simple. that you know everybody wants a gun because not everybody, but so many people want a gun because they want to be a tough guy. They think they're a tough guy. As to Mike's point, and that but just the, shows the opposite. You should get a you're leather not. jacket. And he, yeah, right. And and you know he made the most obvious statement. It was true. You know what? Tailgating and 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 guns don't mix. Football and tailgating, whatever. Now two and it's people true. are dead. He, he wants to go back to when we just fight. But the problem is, you, you can't if they're guns. Guns make that impossible. Too many people have guns. They just do. Mm -hmm. How do we go back to that? You don't. We can't. There's no, no way. The only way, no way back. You know, there is one way. We stop making bullets. Because we'll never get the guns back. That's not going to happen. No, gonna I know happen. that one. I know that. Is that, that a Chris one. Rock reference? Doesn't, didn't he have a stand up about Did he? bullets really expensive? Yeah. yeah. No, you, no, I, yeah. Tax the hell out of bullets. No, I, I, I uh, no, you're right. We can't go back. Dan Campbell, and I quoted him too, said, How about we start taking care of each other? Let's do that. As best yeah, that's not going to happen either. No, I know, but at least, and he didn't want to wade into the political right. issue of gun, and I don't blame him at all and mention that in the column, but. But I like the way he said it. Uh, it was a good column. It was better than um, <laughs> I yelled at one of your columns the other day about Michigan, where you said oh. it was, where you said it was okay to boo Davis Warren now. And as we talked on this podcast, you were mad. After I didn't say it was one. okay to boo him. I did not write that. I said at least he earned the boos this time. He didn't the first time. Boy, it sounds like somebody's splitting hairs over there in their assless chaps. <laughs> <laughs> You know what we call that? It's something you... you a little leather hood with I, a zipper mouth. Can I teach you a word, maybe? Which or they maybe also you sold what? at the shop where I got the leather jacket. We call I that nuance. Try it. I thought you called it nonce. Oh, that's fine, too. Nonce? Nonce. <laughs> N-O-O-N-C-E. He said, Sean, it's nuance. And he said, whatever, man. And I do appreciate that you point out that I made the so, most obvious point, Sean. So Thank I you. do... Uh, Thank you for compliment. So I have a Texas accent now? I don't know. You're you're the you're speaking you, of which. You're Matthew, what you would call a camelon. Did you see Matthew McConaughey at the stadium a couple of weeks ago <laughs> in Ann Arbor? Kamala Lon? hanging out Chimili? with Michael Phelps and Derek Jeter and wait, what? Say that again. I'm sorry. Michael of Texas, Phelps annoys me. <laughs> he, oh, let's dive into this because he, I kind he, of agree. No, he, Erica, he annoys me too. I'm kind of with you, Erica. Right? Did He's you see so him annoying. hanging out with McConaughey with his little man bun up the top? I I'm like not, Matthew McConaughey, but. Mm -hmm. No, but Phelps was with Michael McConaughey. So now I'm Matthew already annoyed with McConaughey now because he hangs out with Michael. They were in Ann Arbor <laughs> in that, that, yeah, that little, I, look, I don't want to judge. I have no hair and too many chins. Oh, I'll but, judge. It looked ridiculous. Oh. The man bun looked ridiculous. He had it in Paris, too. Who had the man bun? Thanks for following along, Phelps. No, I, 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 I don't keep track of the uh, <laughs> hairstyles of Michael uh, Matthew. Of course McConaughey. it was Phelps. Oh, you're above all that, aren't you, Mr. No, Academic? You're just, he's still daydreaming about his stupid leather jacket. Yeah, <laughs> so know, he's, really? he's gone back to it three let's times. Have you keep let's track have of you wear it bun. next show. I'm, I'm going to wear it. And when I walk in here, I guarantee there'll be there'll be respect. Where's some eyeliner, Mike too? Mike has kind of a moose bun on the front. Like right J.D. Uh, Vance. I get <laughs> what do Robert Smith and J.D. Vance have in common? They hate Haitians. No, it's, that's not true. J.D. J.D. Vance is the only guy who hates Haitians. Based on Eyel eyeliner, right? Is that oh yeah, that's right. yes. So that's I knew where you were going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, thanks for bringing the show to a screeching yeah. halt. <laughs> Talk about your jacket again. And, and on Fridays, they're in love. That's the other oh, thing. For God. Sake. So. Uh, uh, Erica, you were supposed to stop this from happening. This may have been a terrible. Why do you wait, hate? Why, why do you I hate? Was my, you why you hate Mike, is it? Uh, Michael Fowler. Why do I not like him? I don't hate him. He just annoys me. He. Oh boy, I. Oh, this is bad. I. I just. I have heard too many stories from too many people. I've heard stories that Those lived are... in Ann Arbor when he was in Ann Arbor that did not make him seem like the great. But you know, he's younger then, so I've heard he stories top, from men and world. women, and just he's also kind of just everywhere and just annoying i get away also he's too fucking good at swimming shivery that too yeah, like, why, smells why? like chlorine kind of weird right wrinkly <laughs> like sean oh but he's been in he's all, oh, he's hard to look me. at too like sean <laughs> <laughs> You're piling on Sean. Okay, this is starting to work out. Wait, this is starting to work out. Yeah. Work out. You, I, I, He's not aesthetically pleasing. To. Yeah, no, I'm not, and that's that's fine. <laughs> not Sean, Michael Phelps. Yeah, no, I, I don't mind. Why you, you know. don't like that swimmer's build? Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> like Sean, I did at one point have a swimmer's build. I swam. Sorry to say, you did. Yeah, that's what I just the, heard gross stories the hundred, too. The about fly, when you say a swimmer's build, like Shamu has a swimmer's build? No, I swam the hundred fly and the two hundred free. Really? Yeah. Huh. Learn something new about this guy every day. Why? I, all of a sudden, I'm. I mean, my dad was a college swimmer, you know. So I didn't know that. Yeah, Why nothing I know against that? swimmers. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, when he was. Ah, uh, that's all right. Did he shave all his body hair? No, but my brother did. Really. Was he a swimmer? Hopefully, I no, did as a lifeguard. My brother's a very handsome. That's right. You man. mentioned you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Baywatch Times. Yeah. So I'll yeah, tell you exactly. I, I promise not to bring in my leather jacket if you promise not to bring in your speedo. That's sort of a mutual. Well, if you saw me in a speedo, no, I and, thought we agreed you were going to come in and wear your. If you your saw me in a speedo in 1982, you'd have you would have. It would have been fine. It would have averted my oh, eyes. Can we see a picture of you and your speedo no in 1982? Picture. There's no picture of that. Yeah, I just yeah, like a is. swimmer. I you was just smiled. And six two and there is 180 one. pounds, whatever. Right. I want to see it. But I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah. Would I? Would I have had a crush on you then? We were talking about my crushes. hair was probably a little too long. And did, did, you, do you, oh, like, did you have a man bun? <laughs> yeah. Do you like? Um, you know, did you like brooders? You probably didn't like brooder, brooder melancholy people. So no, I did. Did you? Who's the dude from Vision Quest? We talked about this before. Modine? Yeah. Do you like Matthew Modine? I don't know. Do I know who that is? Oh, yeah. He was in... Uh, He's in Vision oh. Quest. Yeah. Vision Quest. He was in um, Married to the Mob. Show her. Why don't you pick a movie that she might have seen? Right. I'm trying to pick a movie I think that's I'm, made I since think she I'm was picturing... born. Have you ever seen Full Metal Jacket? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Joker. I mean, he's Joker, the main that's character. That's what Sean looked like oh. before, the, uh, before okay. the rot set in. Mm -hmm. I did before, to get before that he became oh, dissipated. Young. I'm trying to find. Uh, oh, oh no. he's back on his phone. That's great. No, I was trying to find a photo <laughs> for her. of Modine. Right? I had it, we don't need any show on speedo photos. Wait, you have photos of you as a swimmer on your phone? <laughs> no, that's Matthew Modine. Oh, oh, sh okay. Jeez, I sort of kind of. <laughs> that's what I kind of look like a little bit. Yeah. Wait, you I have was, a photo? I thought you were going to pull up like a shirtless. No. You have a photo of Matthew Modine at the <laughs> yeah, ready on your phone. It's a screensaver. No, I did a yeah, I did <laughs> a uh, I did a Google. This is Linda Fiorentino. We were talking earlier about oh, crushes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a crush on her. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking the title for this week's show should be Sean and a Speedo, but we actually want to we want to get people to engage with us. That yeah, you don't want that. Maybe, Full yeah. leather jacket. There you go. Yeah. Oh. Matthew Modine in a you. speedo wearing a biker jacket. Oh, you. What more could every woman want? <laughs> exactly. Except maybe a cyanide oh, cap. Man, the geeks have inherited the earth. Did I do that? What a dork. Does him wanting to play with us again mean that he's turning into a geek? Or we're turning into cool guys? I had so hoped that Erica would elevate the show. Only we're we're dragging her down to our level. This is. <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure about that though? Is that really what's happening? Erica is. Are we dragging a, a her brilliant. down? There's another. Am e I dragging or, you down? Or no. does she Aww. join the show because this is where her true self? Yeah. Lies. Why that that would that would be uh, certainly isn't for that the would money. be paying her a very poor compliment. <laughs> By the way, I love how <laughs> passive aggressive our natural, producer friend is. State. He, the market had enough and didn't say a word. Just said fuck it and hit the button on the on the board. 
I'm watching the clock. And we're into the Geek of the Week. I love that. That, that Take button charge, was, my man. That button was actually supposed to send a lethal charge of electricity through your seat, but we haven't had that completed. So we're, <laughs> the problem we're, is we're the pro- working on that. <laughs> the uh, problem is, Sean, didn't work. And, Sean, you may remember that from Goldfinger. We'll, uh, Wait, you had it perfectly there earlier. I was trying. Well, love, let me tell I you about this week's, this week's geek is the California-based advertising company that rents out the mural space where the beloved whale mural is just outside of Comerica Park. So for years, you know, back in uh, 1997, an artist named Weiland, Robert Weiland, painted these whales on the side of the Broderick Tower in Detroit. Kind of a weird place for whales, uh, given that we're a big freshwater state. But he did it as a gift to Detroit to help beautify the then blighted city while raising awareness of environmental issues that plague the oceans and the Great Lakes. Well, our colleague Kylie Martin at the Detroit Free Press found out that the advertising company that occasionally covers this up and gets people frustrated, and we love the whales, where's the whales, where's the, I don't want to see Diet Coke, what's going on here? They finally came up with a compromise, and they said to this Weiland Foundation that was created to try and increase awareness of the fragile state of our waters and the whale population, they said, you know what, here's what we want to do. We uh, we will come up with a deal where we we won't cover the murals with uh, with banners, and we had a plan. We're going to put a QR code there when we don't have an advertisement. When you take a picture of the QR code, you'll see whales swimming out of the building towards you, which cool. seems kind of weird. Like I'm on acid at the ballpark, <laughs> and they said, "Well, hey, guess what? Oh, God, we won't cover it up. All you got to do, and this is our nonprofit rate. This is the friend rate." You got to give us five hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars a year. What for us not to cover up the whales and the Weiland Foundation? Said that's our whole budget, man. We can't do that. So uh, if you want to save the whales per year, a year, and that's the friend rate. Oh, finally a yeah, period. That's, that's the uh, that's the same rate they give plankton. And uh, so they said five hundred eighty-five <laughs> grand a year. And, I love how when we get to Geek of the Week. The elocution just slows, and okay, we're we're in for a nice yarn here. I, I'm trying to anticipate the Sean interruption and then pick up my line of thought so I can conclude the thought. You in know, a, I, I feel like I can say, at and this that's point, why you're our geek of the week, people it, <laughs> from California who charge too much for advertising to whale people. That's better. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say I feel like I can have a little bit of. What what am I trying to say here? He I don't was, know. But he you, was you, mean again, to me. You stopped the show. He was for mean this. to me to start this. He was mean to he me. He was really mean. So he I feel like mean. if I'm going to give him a little shit for his boring geek of the week segment <laughs> with a, a thousand conjunctions in the sentences, <laughs> <laughs> then I love it when writers fight, <laughs> fight, fight, fight <laughs> over conjunctions and periods. So since Sean is he's, he's laughing over there. Right since Sean has prolonged the agony, uh, th- this is what the Wyland Foundation people said. Somebody fuck somebody over. What happened? They said if, if we put this if we put this QR code, he said it'd be like scanning a QR code for the Mona Lisa to see her flashing a smile, advertising Colgate toothpaste. No, it's not. Wait, we waited five minutes for that. <laughs> you waited five minutes for you to run out of air. Oh. Since you're not swimming anymore. Come on, fire another bar bat. I'm, I'm trying to give you the last word. Fire another bar bat. No, no, no. Quit, no, quit, quit, quit. Such an instigator. Quit. Pool He's, boy. What, what happened? He's so over there shaking his head and rolling I mean, his eyes. Neither of you guys have me, guns, so Like, fight. oh my God, when is this going to be done? But he wants me to be the bad guy. That's totally unfair, Mr. Manipulator, Puppeteer, Producer. He doesn't have his bomber jacket on. He's I just want to see the leather Not pants with a the bomber rear. jacket. Can we see the leather Not chaps? Not a bomber jacket. With the cheeks? Never had out? a bomber jacket. <laughs> You you just admitted you want to see his cheeks hanging out. I do, out. I do. Are you? Do you have enough cheek though that they would hang out? At the risk of prolonging this, oh, no. I'm still laughing at that. Oh no! My ass is so firm. Dan <laughs> How firm Gilbert, is it? 
could build the tallest building in Detroit on it. It's Don't not, make me laugh even more. It's no, not I'm a kidding. tight ass. It's just a firm ass. He sent me an email. That's this all. is 25, 20, 22, 23 years ago. Oh, he boy. Me, he this is a an, setup. This is a setup. He sent me an email saying my ass is so firm you can play jacks on it. Hmm. I'll never forget when he said that. And I yeah. said, doesn't the earring get Why was he saying, sending you an email? <laughs> about yeah, was, that's a really way to hit on, weird way to hit on something. He also sent me an email that said, Nighty Night Garter Boys. I got a, what What was it? Did you uh, the Kaju Cafe is the pride of the Should have reported side. him to HR. Well, you'll find great eats. It was one of the great beats. emails ever. I, I, it was one of the funniest and, things. And feather bowling. Uh, leather jackets also welcome. Start your week off right with muscle madness every Monday. And that's not the muscles that Sean, when he had that six pack, I, when he was doing laps uh, in the pool there. I never had a six pack. I was built like a swimmer. <laughs> I, I think swimmers do have pretty finely defined abdominal muscles. I didn't muscles. have a six pack. My nipples didn't sag back then. How about that? <laughs> Wait, we were just God. talking about f- all you can eat food, and I think you've just taken away everybody's appetite. Gross. <laughs> Anyways, if you can just forget about the last It happens to everyone. Happening? It happens to everyone. No, it doesn't. Of course it does. But eventually, what? gravity does its thing. It's inevitable. Well, I mean, you know, you tone up. Just you... accept it. Just adjust. In a couple well, of... in your 40s, yeah. What's going on at the Kaju? I mean, I've given more, up. More reps. <laughs> I just want to stop thinking about, thinking about Sean's nips. More reps, less weight. Uh, start your week off right with Muscle Madness every Monday, where the Kaju dishes up all you can eat muscles, which, if you remember what we just talked about, that's none. But if you can somehow erase the last 30 seconds of your life, they'll serve muscles until you're, till you burst. On Wednesdays, it's karaoke. Friday, the Abbey Road Project comes to the Kaju Cafe. And on Saturday, something that Sean hears every Saturday, a band called Not Tonight. <laughs> Except he hears not tonight, honey, <laughs> and you don't fit in that speedo anymore. Not tonight takes the stage. Then the weekend, you can end it on a high note with Righteous Willie, the 30 year reunion. That's who Sean is hoping to release on Saturday night when he's told not tonight is a Righteous Willie. Once every 30 years, it gets together with uh, the opposite sex. You had a high note and then you just ruined it. Just saying. <laughs> It's, that's where the producer's supposed to pull you back. We are, where are you to save me from myself? I love how the most offended he's been the whole show is himself. about, my ass is firm. <laughs> and so is my resolve. Dan Gilbert can build buildings on it. That's right. Just will take a long time and require massive tax breaks. Uh, also, once Righteous Willie is done oh. having his 30-year reunion, hmm. Doug Deming and the Jewel Tones will take over. For more on the Cadu, the music and the menu, go to cadjucafe.com. I hope people still do after that. It depends what they remember. If they have selective memories, the Kaju is going to be packed. If they remember Sean and the Speedo, those muscles are going to go bad right there on the shelf. <laughs> and now we're in room 7609, where we listen to all kinds of music. Mark is taking over because he got caught stealing.
I told you we'd get back to Jane's addiction, but I'm sad. unfortunately, we won't be getting to Love and Rockets at all, which is... Oh, yeah. that's right. It's all about you. No, it's all about... So you don't... You don't it's all like, about Daniel Ash. You don't like Jane's Not addiction? Ash. That tune, when it came out, I thought was very different. I gotta and tell you, I the, liked it, but I'm long pause I don't like, before the start. <laughs> yeah, I don't incredible. like I don't I don't like Perry Farrell. I don't like Jane's Addiction. Sorry. Okay, but this da, goes da, back. Da, da, da. This oh. goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Why can you not separate the music from Perry Farrell? I can separate the music from Perry Farrell. Well, so you don't but I like just the don't, music? I just don't like the music that much. Gotcha. I thought when it but came you out, you it was just kind said of because you don't like. Well, that's part of it. You know, like some of the stuff they like, like Jane said, that's okay. That tune, you know, it, it, song, it really stop. stood out when it came out. I'm like, whoa, what is this? This is kind of different. But then after a while, I'm like, yeah, it's not, it's all right. So, oh, okay. You were threatened by this. The, your Smiths were threatened, right? Is that what's happening? Yeah, no, the Smiths had nothing to fear from Jane's addiction. Okay. <laughs> so the concert, the whole tour is canceled because, in case people didn't know, Perry Farrell got in a fight with Dave Navarro on stage. Navarro was just shredding while Perry claims he was trying to talk to the crowd and they couldn't hear him. So he literally just popped him. Um, but it's no surprise because this band has fought since the very, very beginning. And one of the things we've gotten out of their fights is Lollapalooza was born uh, because they were breaking up. They all hated each other and they decided to do one final blowout concert with all their favorite bands. Hence the birth of Lollapalooza, which has been just excellent, a massive, massive moneymaker for uh, for Barry Farrell, for you know anybody that really produced it. It's um, you know, so I don't know what we'll get out of this fight. That song too, you know, the dog barking in the beginning. That was. Um, Do you know the story behind that? Zeke the Wonder Dog. I no, it was know. Perry Farrell's dog. He brought it to the studio. Oh, and it barked by accident. And he goes, "I kind of like that. Let's keep it in there." And then they made it into a, a rhythm. I love it. I, they're a fascinating band because I didn't know that. they take crazy chances. And that that song is on Ritual de lo Habitual, their second album. And that they fought. They, see, this is why this is one reason you should like Perry Farrell. Besides starting Lollapalooza. Oh. They're, um, the cover of that album features two naked ladies, uh, full frontal everything. And I believe it was in Royal Oak where they had a giant poster for the album and the release date and everything. And a mother's group complained and tried to get the record label to change that cover. And he fought it. It was a First Amendment battle. They they won. But you will, you'll notice if you go on um, like Spotify or wherever you stream the music, they don't have that cover. A lot of them will just have the blank white cover. So... A very spinal tap outcome to the controversial album cover. I don't know. I, I like I like people that take chances creatively, and Perry does that. Yeah. I don't know why, I don't know why you hate him for it. He's, oh. a, he's not fair. He's a dick, and music isn't that great. So it's, I, I don't hate him. Why I just, is he a I dick? just don't I kind of like this. Keep going. He's, he's kind of a baby. He's kind of obnoxious. Wait, he's mean, totally obnoxious. He's egotistical. He's uh, difficult to get along like with. Like a lot of like a lot of rock stars. Yeah. And podcast co-hosts. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> wow. Sean's not e egotistical. <laughs> wow. I say that. I another e. Say that. Oh. <laughs> another e oh. adjective. Wow. That hurts. That's room 7609. I don't know. More Incisive. interestingly. I, I like Jane's Addiction a lot. I think they're a really good band. Oh, that's great. Well, I think that would be a I think that. I'll dismiss it. More interestingly, Mark, tell the listener. No, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, please. Tell the listener your, your purchase. I don't want to talk about it. Come on. You said you didn't want to be. You, it's something you get into, and you said, what, what do you say, Erica? I don't want to be touched. I bought. <sighs> he wanted it to be big enough so no one could touch him. Okay, there, there we go. It's cryptic. <laughs> I know. So, oh, I, will you? Do you get in? I got a hot. I got a hot tub, and I got a big one because I don't want people touching me. And how do you and get in? A suit or naked? What? Oh, why? Well, I wear a suit. I have children That's around. A lot of details. No, but when your kids are, when your kids are, <laughs> children are around. Are you comfortable enough with yourself when your kids I are asleep? In, I live in Berkeley. I mean, <laughs> I, people they probably can peer out their window at me. So you'll you'll never treat it like a bathtub at eleven o'clock at night. No. Okay. Does that I'm suggest that you do this, Sean? Should we avoid your property I, I after don't dark? I don't know many people that don't <laughs> go naked into their hot tub. No, I, I, I know a lot of people do. I just, I don't know. I'm too modest. That's what I don't know. I'm not making fun at all or judging. I'm just asking. I don't know. I've had it for two days, so. Because, I mean, right. yeah, yeah, when it's. it's got to break it in a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> when it's 10 degrees in February and you want to go out there at night and, you know. Should we do a, a bonus episode from the hot tub? No. 
That'd be so, fun. Soul of Detroit uncovered. I don't want you guys in there. That'd be fun. I'll, I'll, oh wear, a tw- I'll wear a 20 style suit, though, and cover from. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll let Michael Phelps so, know he can be your guest. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah, get the Borat on. That'd be a good look. That's the one thing I do love about Michael Phelps. I really wish I had what, the, the, the wide, wide suit, shoulders and swim the narrow spa. hips. No, the Michael Phelps swim spa. <laughs> Have you seen that fucker? No. It's like 25 grand. It's awesome. Sorry. I've been doing a lot of hot tub shopping. Why don't, why don't we like Michael Phelps? Oh, my God. Go, we'll listen back Just, to the podcast. There's a lot of on. reasons. Yeah. We were talking about it when you were looking at your phone. <laughs> oh, no. I, Thanks yeah. for paying attention. He, he's annoying and he has a man button? No, he always cuts the line at Subway. He probably does that, too. I think I so. Be I think so. Him and Jared. So, uh, oh. yeah. So, that's... That's room 7609. We encourage you to send us your favorite songs with a great story. Hopefully it's something that uh, we haven't heard before, either the song or the story. And hopefully it doesn't involve Perry Farrell. That would be great if you could help us out with that. And you can send it to mlsoulofdetroit at gmail.com. You can also find out more about the show at mlsoulofdetroit.com where you can make a donation. Yes, you don't have to join the Soul Patrol, which is what we call or at least what I call, our Patreon posse, where people send us money on a monthly basis. It actually gets easy. You sign up and we just take it from you to support the show. But Robert sent us a nice little sum and said, thank you for all the valuable reporting and local history, stories, and insight. Sean. He did not address that to Sean. Oh. It was was understood. And we've been hearing back from uh, our Patreon subscribers. If you go on there, I'm starting to try and communicate a little bit with the group and we have a new member of the patreon posse katie b joined up this week thank you very much it's a great way to support the show yes and we have more mouths to feed as you can see with eric who'll be coming on a couple times a month she will be hosting next week when our guest will be eli zaret talking about the tigers and his book on the 1984 tigers and if you are a patreon <laughs> subscriber for as little as five erica, bucks it turns out erica has a little a soul month, <laughs> look at that a lot of you soul. can watch the show and you I can like see that. erica bust a move and sean put his glasses on his phone <laughs> no 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 but it's <laughs> while he I'm dancing looks on if, you're his d- phone. if you're just listening i'm dancing this is the best music we play every week i mean let's be real this is max prokop <laughs> bass player for the smiths united yeah it's got a little 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 the groove horns. to it. There's the horns. <laughs> so, and we also hear from our our Patreon members from once in a while. Jim O'Donnell says last week we talked about how Mark knows nothing about John Wayne. I thought you were just going to end it there. Yeah. No, Mark I don't. knows nothing. Well, it's, I'm comfortable in that. We're, we're, we're trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Apparently, he knows a lot about about hot water outside. Uh, Jim says the Quiet Man was one of my dad's favorite movies. My family knows that film, in which John Wayne starred as Trooper. Sean Thornton, who uh, was a boxer who killed a man in the ring and goes home to Ireland to try and. Erica, have you ever ever seen a John Wayne movie? Yes. Damn it. Have you seen Quiet Man? Oh, gosh. A long time ago. I was was really counting on you saying no. They they ridiculed me for bringing up Quiet Man, but apparently a listener. Quiet Man's a good movie. Maureen O'Hara? Yeah. Very good. Sometimes I feel like. It's just overrated. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. Broderick Crawford. I mean, but it, I mean, but it's relative to John Wayne, who was not really much of an actor, right? I'd say that. Sorry. No, I agree. I kind of agree. Yeah, uh, he has it's his like, moments. He's like Ronald Reagan. He has his moments, but he's a little overrated. Yeah, I think he was more of a he was more of a an image. People yes. people identified with what he represented more so than were moved by his, his range. ability to uh, yeah. emote. <laughs> yeah, his range, what range? <laughs> so if yeah. you subscribe to the show for five bucks a month, you get to watch the show. You get the show before everybody else. You get the show without the insertion ads, and you will get our bonus episode. We will be posting another bonus episode shortly, featuring our new member of the team, Eric Erickson, dispensing some of the Shonsky kind of advice out. that you rarely get from the rest of us because it's actually good advice. So, oh, yeah, it's good. Are you talking about me? Yeah, you give good advice. Oh, What kind of advice does Sean give? I can give advice. I just don't, I don't take my own. Well, no, 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 that's no, a question for Eric. Yeah. What kind of advice does <laughs> Sean give? That's the dilemma. Uh, let's say distracted advice. <laughs> Once again, flattery to Erica, nothing but... Nothing but <laughs> angst. You set that up, didn't you? Well, no. You I want just, me to fire back at him, don't you? Said whatever I see he, what you're doing over there. Said whatever he wanted. To I'm, say. A, I'm your. Would fucking you like monkey. to retort? Is that what's going on? What retort, monkey? <laughs> Would you like to retort? <laughs> Look oh, at this. Geez. Just give he him a just, grape. He's just setting this up. He just. I'm, I'm here to amuse you. No, I'm trying to get you guys to get along. 
And and we always appreciate really? your feedback, tell. which you can I send can us tell. at thinks- mlsolvedetroit at gmail.com. In fact, we have some some feedback from Dan, which Sean may or may not read if he's not distracted by motes of dust, uh, thoughts of the 70s. Uh, the stroke. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no. Oh, it says, yeah, hi. He's stroking out again. The smell of toast. Hi, hi, I'm Ellen, Sean. Why do you insist on no, having Mark. a music segment every week that's nothing but ecstasy-addled Musicians. Ooh. Hmm. Oh. That's uh, the feedback? That's a different feedback. <laughs> is, that, is that from your journal? What, what is that? Hmm. Yes, definitely. Jeez. Yeah. Trench, trench goats, ecstasy, and bad bass playing. Yeah. Bad that's bass the, playing. The new wave movement. Yeah, no groove, right? Certainly no soul. Hi, I'm Ellen Sean. Enjoy the... P- <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just trying to trigger him. Yeah, Mark it worked. I, 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 I wasn't. Gonna, it did work. I wasn't going to let Mark manipulate me into doing it right away, so it. I waited a couple of minutes and then did it because then it was my yeah, decision. Yeah, you're such a victim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Owen Sean. Enjoy the pod, especially the random journalism stories you share with listeners. Here's one for you: tragic double homicide at a Lions tailgate on Sunday at 4:30 p.m. Graphic cell phone videos from the scene immediately went viral, showing two seemingly dead men at Eastern Market, with numerous police not rendering any aid to the victims. However, the second death was not confirmed by the city until 12 noon on Monday. Convenient timing as this kept a, quote, double homicide at Detroit Lions tailgate story off the Sunday night primetime game. Monday newspaper, front pages, plus Monday morning Today show, Good Morning America, most popular TV and radio sports practice. What do we call that? Oh, programming, et cetera. Do you think, Mike, the city of Detroit, and Erica, sorry, not Mark, though, the city of Detroit, perhaps even at the nudging of Lions owners, management, and the NFL, would purposely delay the confirmation of two DOA Sunday deaths to news outlets to blunt the impact of a more viral worthy double homicide? And did the city purposely sit on the second death? Is that discoverable via death records? No. First of all, how, how do we know <laughs> that police didn't render aid? I, I don't know that I've seen that reported anywhere. We don't. Yeah. And most just... of the cell phone video is of people running in the other direction, so I'm not sure they were eyewitness to what the, happened. The, what he's talking about, real quickly, if I can, for the listener didn't see, there's a there's a still shot, I think, and maybe there's even a video clip of the two men who were shot lying there, and there are no paramedics around either. Sure. One is dead. The other one is not dead yet. So I think that's why he's asking those questions. Hmm. I, I'd want to see uh, well, we a all more know panoramic who, view of the scene before not, I would condemn uh, exactly. our responders. And, but, and do, but they the, the, do they know where the shooter is? Are they trying to secure? I mean, at, at some point you get in there, you got to make sure certain things happen before you bring the paramedics I wouldn't, in, right? I wouldn't blame people for thinking that way because they always haven't had the quickest response times in the city. But I would think around tailgate that there would be some kind of EMS. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to get hung up on the first part of the question, but I think when we're talking about a Detroit police and our no, our, I, our EMS people, it, it was all these over are the, the folks news, that when you hear shooting was. and everybody's running the other way, they run towards it. Yeah. So let's not let's not right. forget the kind of jobs that they have. Um, but uh, but it but, was all but, but a conspiracy. Over the ESPN, ESPN had a headline that evening. Yeah, yeah so but yeah, but a conspiracy to try and diminish the negative impact is. I mean. Uh, I mean, Erica, we've both done TV news. It's very instantaneous. It, it gets out there right away. But does does single homicide seem that much better than double homicide? I mean, I mean, double homicide's obviously worse. But I, who knows? There's so many. <laughs> there's so many who knows here. One, that's one video, and it's not a yeah. whole the whole scene. How many times have we seen? Oh, that's just part of what we're seeing. And then we see the whole thing. Second, what you're just saying, uh, we don't want to just discredit cops or any EMS people because, again, we don't know. We weren't there. They may have had to run through the crowd. You never know. I mean, that could have been absolutely chaotic. Going against traffic. Right. It likely was. And and. Who knows how long the second person was hanging on and how, how long doctors worked on this person. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe they maybe they were near death and they were brought back. I, I have no idea. This is absolute just guessing. But we've seen that, too, like where someone appears to be dead and they're not. 
Yeah, and, clearly and, not. And you're not sure where the guns are, and is this a, where the guns is a safe are. situation? But exactly, I, that that'd be my but, main point. But to me, maybe they were just taken to the hospital, and they were still alive, but they were critical, and then they died. I rode around in an ambulance one time in a city in Alabama for a story, and occasionally they'd get called to a shooting. And I remember being with them one night, and they sat back for a second until the cops because they beat the cops, and they want the cops yeah. to get there first. And I don't, I don't blame them. That's pretty common. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. But but in this case, I think the news got out very quickly that somebody was killed at a tailgate after the Lions game, right? That that broke yeah, pretty we, quickly. We sat, yeah, that we, was very fast. We had a reporter yeah, so. in the in Fort Field, one of our, our younger sports reporters, and he, he got up and left to go cover that. Yeah, so why did, why did you skip that this? Was, and that was out on social media so fast. It was. Yeah, it so because people who were there were just wow. Two shot, one dead, to me, doesn't seem that much better than right. two shot, two dead. And and I think that news got out pretty fast. The other thing about conspiracies is anybody who's looked at a conspiracy closely and you look at who the participants are, pretty quickly you realize these folks have trouble putting on their shoes, uh, even if they're slip-on. So how are they going to pull off a, a multi-platform media conspiracy? I just don't see that. But uh, And but, also... Is it really worth it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. horrible news is only really terrible news. We're going to make it from being awful news. I, I, man, I don't, I don't, I don't. Unless I don't somebody see it, really, really, really screwed up, and I just that would be a lot of levels of screwing up, and yeah, and to, to realize that? that right away, and then to do come up with a plan, to and come up with a plan, plan, and then execute the plan yeah, <laughs> that quick. quickly. Yeah. That feels a little no far fetched, but. No but I, I also talk about police and, and, and their jobs and how they go places that we don't go. There's a Michigan State trooper who was killed over the yeah. weekend. He yes. was on the side of the road. Now, there's a story that's getting not enough attention. I agree. Yeah. It's it's kind of getting buried now, yeah. uh, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Well, I think Where I... What was this? Uh, this was on, I think, I-75. Was, I have to look. I'm, I mean, now, what were the terrible, details, I can't even Mike? remember either. Do you mind? Well, so... So this was a uh, this was a trooper who was on the side of the road, um, and he was struck by a woman driving a Ford Explorer, who died. Uh, he was in his car, and he was uh, he had to be extracted with the jaws of life. It was a nasty. Yeah. nasty. So and then sad. he died at the hospital. Uh, his name is Dan. Now, at the risk of making this sound like this is about me. Um, I read in one of the published reports that he had been an assistant trainer with the Red Wings be from 12, oh, really? 2012 to 2015. Oh, really? And I reached out to a buddy of mine. Um, we both were in a fantasy camp. Uh, I was there doing it for Fox 2. He was a, a Marine taking some time off because he loves hockey and wanted to participate in this. And there was a locker room, a guy in the locker room. We saw him every day, quiet guy, big guy, super nice guy. His name was Dan. And I shot my buddy Chad a note and said, I think this is Dan, who was the assistant trainer who we got to know during this fantasy camp. And he said, I think it is too. And he was um, he was a, just a, a really, really nice guy. Uh, apparently, the uh, working for the Red Wings didn't have the career path that he was hoping for. I mean, people who get those jobs tend to keep them for a long time. So in terms of moving up, there's not a lot of upward mobility, and I don't think the Red Wings pay these guys a princely sum. So he must have gone to the State Police Academy and become a, a trooper. I think he was a highway enforcement uh, guy. They kind of check on the trucks and make sure they're safe and yeah. doing all that other stuff. He, had, he hadn't been with the uh, State Police that long. Yeah, only about seven years. So I think he went from the Red Wings the, the woman that to hit MSP. Him, got, the woman that hit him died as yes. well. Mm -hmm. She hit the wall and so, then hit them. So what happened? Nasty. He was on the shoulder? He had pulled over a truck, a semi. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, another, I think it was a minivan, hit the... Um, the middle wall. What was that called? Why am I median? The median. Thank you. Yeah. And then swerved over, and like the, the uh, MSP car looks like it's cut in half. I mean, what? it was nasty. Yeah. So, uh, so Dan's name is Dan Kerstetter, mm -hmm. and other than expressing our uh, heartfelt, you know, just, I mean, it just is horrible that when this happens. How old was he? Oh, God, he couldn't have been much Four, more than... 45. Yeah, he wasn't... 45, okay. Three kids. Like older than I thought. Oh. Yeah. But uh, but but here's why we mention this, other than to, to honor Dan. 
When you're on the road. Move over. Get the hell over, okay? It is the or law. Slow down if you can't move over. Now, don't sideswipe someone to get to the next lane, but you are supposed to give way when there is a civilian, a police officer, a tow truck operator, anybody who is in the breakdown lane, get to the next lane so that you don't clip them. Even when you drive by, when you're going at that rate of speed, there's a wash where the, the air pushes along. If somebody's working on a car on a jack, yeah. and maybe they're like most people, they don't know how to operate a jack, you can knock that car over on top. Of it. Get your ass over. Make way for folks who are in. But make the sure there's room to get over. Don't just. And yeah, right. If there's yeah. no room, slow and, your ass down. And jerk your wheel over because I've you seen see people do panic. that yeah. too. Yeah. Don't lock them up. If you can't, the law says if you can't get over, you don't have to. But, but most of the time we see people who are in a coma just motoring away at like 90 miles an hour, not thinking about shit. And so getting over it, like, well, I'm the only person in the world who matters. So I'll just keep going like this. Folks, you know, these things can be avoided. There's no reason that we have to. I think lose that's what makes it that's what makes folks. it the worst is when you see things that could have been avoided like like it does. like this. They, just being aware just pay attention. of other people. Yeah. So pay so. attention. It's not like you're doing a podcast where you just look at your phone the whole time. <laughs> Look on yeah, that's face. when that's you can look at your phone. A month. What? Wait that's till you're on a podcast. A month, right? That's when you can look at your phone. Yeah. So, what? not to say she was doing. She's trying to add a little levity to move off the topic. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, Dan Kerstetter, good guy. Uh, his didn't family. Work. You know, if if you have an opportunity oh, to work. reach out to them to help them, please do so. And let's yeah. make sure that this is the last time we talk about somebody dying needlessly because people either were not under control or not paying attention. So, uh, so I don't want to end on a down note. Yeah. Segue um, out of this. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, nothing uplifts the soul more than an hour with Eli Zaret, which is what we have Bravo. coming up next week with uh, Bill Morris. An hour with Erica. Great book. I'd probably break that higher. Aww. I was trying to work up to Erica. This is okay. like, you know, when we, you we, when you we, come up from the depths, you can get the bends if you move too new, fast. We got a so. new teammate. We can't just ignore her. Uh, it's, well, we, Sean, this is called a crescendo. <laughs> we don't have until Friday. Not tonight, Sean. Not tonight. <laughs> we don't have until Friday. <sighs> Anyways, Eli will be here next week along with the author of a book about the Detroit Lions taking you behind the scenes. <laughs> So you can see what was going on during the William Clay Ford uh, tenure, which uh, thankfully ended and has been replaced by Sheila Hamp, who is the much more uh, effective member of the Ford family running team. And also... Yeah, that, but now they suck again, right, Sean? Yeah. Oh they, boy. That was another one of his columns, wasn't it? Was that your column? To not, to not be mad at him because good teams lose? <laughs> I may have written was that. Was that your count? I mean, that might have I been may days. have written that. That might have been days. I may you, have. Churn, you churn out so much drivel, you don't even remember. <laughs> Over the weekend, yes. It's, okay. it's, uh, I mean, yeah, you can call it drivel. That's fine. Well, a, a couple well, episodes. Not, not today's column. And today's column was great. Oh, thank you. A couple episodes ago, I read, <laughs> I read this just incredibly on point line from, uh, one of Sean's columns and Sean's like, I didn't write that. I said, no, no, you did write that. And Sean's like, no, I didn't write that. And I said, no, I'm, you did. Stop and he said, it. well, I, okay, whatever. And I looked back, no, it was Rainer Saban wrote it. So. Oh, okay. I thought he ended up writing it. I, I, wow. <laughs> no, I didn't. I he didn't take the bait. Like, There's some, no, I didn't. We, we will have a link to Sean's uh, latest column on our website, which is mlsolvedetroit.com. And very and kind of you. While we're doing condol condolences to Joe Schmidt, one of the greatest lines yeah. ever. Uh, his uh, son, Joe Schmidt Jr., is one of my best friends in college. Oh, really? Great guy. And I got to meet uh, Joe Schmidt Sr. a couple times. He really was an outstanding, gracious gentleman, hardworking dude, exactly what you'd expect from someone from Pittsburgh who came to Detroit and had a great career and then built a great career as a businessman, had a terrific family. I really hope that the Lions uh, do what uh, Bill Dow recommended in the free press, and that is build a statue yeah. in honor of Joe Schmidt, who was the last great Lions coach before uh, Dan Campbell. Wayne Fonts? Oh. Oh, the big buck? No. No. This is a nice eulogy. Cyrus is suffocating, but beautiful eulogy, but let it be known that uh, you were friends with his kid. <laughs> Well, I'm just saying how I knew the man. I'm just, I'm just telling you, I had some oh, personal experience with them. You're relating, aren't you? It's great. Here's the thing: the, the great thing about having Erica. To here those of us when, who get out of basements, we do meet people. When Mike was just talking, Erica had sort of a. No, she wasn't smiling. So, Mike, if you can use your peripheral vision, that's a good cue. If 
there's not there's a blank look on her face, and then there's probably time for a period. You know, you know, a good way to get the show to end, Sean. It's a full moon, like is a full to stop moon talking. Lunar eclipse. So that's probably <laughs> why at, it's getting to it's Mark. getting to him right now. <sighs> well, what's going on? Yeah, I'm, I'm. You know, I'm sorry that we He's honored people who uh, who are no longer with us. Um, you know, it's not like we're like uh, here's five minutes oh, on some so dude sorry who runs a hot dog Joe. stand oh, and talk, sells crack. You talk to his son. I'm so sorry to hear about Joe Schmidt. By the way, let me tell you about my interaction with oh, Joe. Boy. Schmidt. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Let me tell you one last thing about Joe Schmidt. He would oh, not. Wow. He would not put up with There's this more. kind of. This kind of. Uh, I think he'd be I, laughing at this conversation yes. though, and I don't know nothing about him. And perhaps he is. It's just my. He opinion. is now. So let's start talking about Roger Bannister too. Okay. Four minute mile. Yeah. Why? I don't know. He's dead. Yeah, because uh, Roger <laughs> Bannister finished a mile before Sean made his point. That's how he's known. That's, I mean, that's, yeah. what, that's what our what psychological random, profile over here would call projection. What a random person yep. to pull out, Roger Bannister. Not tonight, Sean. All Not right. Tonight. Oh my God. Are you kids? Are you kids done fighting? I don't think they are. Good Mom news. and I are very upset at you too. <laughs> Sean also <laughs> finishes in less than four minutes, by the way, but it's not a record anybody's celebrating in the Windsor household. So Cyrus, it's time to take us out before oh Sean God. says something. What is he doing? I think the stroke's back. What? Can you dig that? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? We got all that space down the basement. All those cars, all that time at night, nobody watching us. Pimps. Are you saying we should become pimps? Podcasters! <laughs> you and me, buddy! We're all yours, Mark. <laughs> Together, they're going to make the day pay off all night long. On the soul of Detroit. <laughs>